Today I am going to show you how to make this wonderful little curio cabinet out of just an ordinary tea box that you can get at Dollarama or whatever other discount store that you have in your area. It's pretty simple to make because it comes almost pre-made. Just set this to the side and show you how the box comes. Alright, so this is what you're going to pick up at the Dollarama. It's a $3 tea box. This is glass. They come pretty rough. They're in the craft section so that you can paint it up however you like. Just a pretty basic thin plywood construction here. And just opens up. Now tea boxes usually have these little dips in them. But I really dislike having a dip because when I stand this up here for you, you'll see that your shells will have a dip. Now, if you like this, you can keep it, but I personally don't like it. I don't like how it looks in there with the scalloping. I like to have more of a, a flat look, as you can see there. And it also gives you a little bit of room that if you have a larger object, like this little mouse nest, you can just set that on the bottom there and that scalloping isn't going to come over and obscure from it. I also find that it looks a lot cleaner as well. So our first task in making this box is to remove the sticker off of this. Now sometimes they will peel off really easy. Like this one, it started easy but it's going to be a little hard. So just really slowly, gently peel off what you can. That's not too bad actually. That's a lot better than the other one I did. Like this one here, the label just popped right off. This one here is coming mostly off, but the other one I had a really hard time. So anyway, when you're stuck with a residue like this, a little bit of glass cleaner. You can use whatever kind of glass cleaner you want. You can even use vinegar for this. Vinegar also works good. So you just want to, whatever way your table's going, you want to keep it from pooling in a spot that's not over your, your label. And you want this to sit for a couple minutes. It's starting to get a little bit more squishy. The problem is, you can see this part is coming right off here. But if it's a little harder, and you don't want to use your fingernails, you can use any kind of little scraper. I would recommend to use a plastic putty scraper for doing drywall work. I cannot find mine at all, so I'm just going to use like a little kitchen scraper here. This is usually a two-handed job, but I'm going to see if I can do it just one-handed here to show you what to do. Don't put a lot of pressure because you could scratch your glass. Just very gently push on it and don't use too much downward force and you can wiggle a little bit. You can see how that's picking up all that adhesive. As I said, you can use vinegar for this. You can even use isopropyl alcohol for it as well. They all work really well. I just happen to have a little bit of glass cleaner closer to me. Alright, so that has come off pretty good. Alright, so after you got your glass cleaned, the next part is sanding it. These boxes do come pretty well finished, but they are rough. So you'll want to take that roughness off, because if not, it will show up pretty strongly in your finished product. You don't want it to be rough looking. So what you want to do is you want to remove your hardware. It just unscrews. Put it in a little jar or a little bag so you don't lose it because it is going to take you probably a couple of days to complete this for most people. So you want to make sure that you do not lose your hardware while that's going on. 
So I've given this a very light sanding and I'm just going to sand it again just to show you how to sand it. This is just a very, very light grit sandpaper. I can't really tell you what it is. It says 600 on it. You can use something that's a little more coarse if you like, or something that's a little thinner if you like. It's all on what finish you want on your box. So anyway, for sanding, you always want to go with the grain of the wood. This will make it the smoothest. You don't want to go a crossed way. That makes your wood very unhappy. It makes it bumpy. You will see the scratches in the finished product if you go across the grain. So always sand with the grain. Now as I said, I already did a quick sand on this. I already have it smooth. This is just a little demonstration. You want to spend five or six minutes giving this a little sand up. Just to remove any roughness in that wood. So again, you want to, looking at all of your different pieces, you want to go with the grain. No matter what side of the box you're working on, you can see which way the grain lies. Now I've already filmed a little video of me doing the paint job on this. So if you want to finish like this, or if you want a different color, it'll be all explained there how I got this finish out of wood that looks like this. The next step is mixing up some really strong tea. That'll just give it a very light base. It doesn't matter if you're gentle doing this because you're going to be using paper towel or a sponge to rub it in anyway. So you don't have to be very precise. Next I'm going to take a bit of acrylic paint. You don't have to use the stuff in the tubes. You can get the stuff in the bottles from the Dollarama as well. Now the reason that I'm doing it this way instead of using an actual stain is number one, it's more easily accessible and it's cheaper. Now for people like myself who don't do a lot of projects with wood, you're only going to do one or two projects, then it really doesn't make any sense for you to go out and buy a jug of stain when you can just do this with a tube of acrylics from the dollar store. Now, I don't know if you can see with the lighting, but it is starting to bring the grain out pretty good. So I'm just going to let this end sit and move on to the next edge. And you can see how that's come out. So I'm just going to finish up the other sides and then bring you back for the next step. Now what we want is we want to bring out some of that natural figure. So we take a darker color of brown, put some water well actually tea water on it. Just pick up a bit on the brush and very gently like you're doing watercolor move it into the natural greens, just the parts that are naturally darker and that'll bring it pop out a little bit.
can see that this side is already dry. You can see the difference in that to what it had been like this color. It actually brings out the green a lot more. So I'm going to color in the inside of my box now and then I'll come back when it's all dry and ready for the next step. Here's our box all painted up. So all this needs right now is to be sprayed. Now it doesn't look anything too special right now, but once that spray goes on you'll see a change into it. So we'll do the back first. Pretty windy, so I got to get in a little bit closer than I usually like to. Okay, I can see the gloss on that. You can see the color changed already there. It went from being like this. To being like this. You can see a lot of the figurines come right out. Alright, it's the next day. I brought these out again early this morning and gave them another couple of coats. You can see how beautifully that turned out. You can really see the green. Now I painted the inside insert black because I wanted it to stand out a little bit. But I want the back to be a, still a lighter color so that the light kind of reflects back. So it doesn't look like the objects that are in there are in utter darkness. I'm also working on a prototype for a ghost repellent. Because my nephew, he's very psychic. And he's been seeing ghosts at night and monsters. Now, now a lot of it might just be the childhood thing. But he's also been seeing stuff that when we asked the older locals, yeah, these people that he's talking about did exist, and he's only four, so if we didn't even know about these people, how would he? But anyway, this is going to be a little ghost repellent for him. We'll see what that holds for later on. I'll do a little update video once it's finished. For the inserts, you'll want to take them apart which is relatively easy. Most of the ones I've seen so far with these little inserts in the tea boxes, they just slap together. So it's just a simple matter of popping them out. And again, this is usually also a two-handed job. But they just slide off. You can see they're, they're just two little grooves. So that's pretty easy. So your next step is you want to measure these out. Now if you got one of those nifty little things that square off, that is perfect. I don't have one of those. So you got to try to really get this up. Sometimes it's easy just to use the edge of your ruler as a square. Now, all you want to do is take just those tips off. Just mark that. A pencil. Now, don't worry about getting it too perfect in the back, because you see here these straight lines. They run into the curve. 
we're going to use this as our back so that will sit flat enough in the back to be good for what we want. So I'm just going to mark up the rest of them here. And again, you're just going to get a tiny bit of that scallop line in, left in there, but that's not going to be a big issue. We have our boxes all finished. I made a nice little black trim on these to kind of frame all the objects. So now that your boxes are done, it's time to figure out what you're going to put in them. Now here's one that I've already done, which I showed at the start of this video. But you can put just about anything that you have that is small enough to go into it. Little rabbit skulls, insects, pieces of crabs, anything that you have that you find interesting and want to collect. You can get small jars and fill them with different things, like I did here. This one here has squirrel bones. Another one has maggot casings. We even have a couple of different lichens and porcupine quills there. And another thing that you will want to do is if you're doing little jars, you can make labels. I think that's going to focus on how small that writing is. This is maggot sheds. Or you can even put the label on the side of the bottle so that when you're looking at the bottle itself, you can see the label. It's up to you where you put it. You could even just put a little ribbon with a, with a little card hanging off of it. You can put taxidermy specimens in there, or you can just bones, plants, whatever you want to stick in there, you can stick in. Just put a little bit in this one as an example. And that just shows how easy it is to make a, a nice little curio collection. That looks pretty neat as it is there. Now that you see how easy it is to make a miniature curio cabinet, you can go ahead and design out your own and fill it with all the little treasures that you have collected. And if you do make one of these cabinets, go ahead and make a video for me and show me what you've made.